Denis Sung Ho is well known as a classical guitarist in Europe. He was adopted to Belgium nine months after his birth in Korea, but is now acting as a bridge between Korea and the world. Holding positions like the artistic director for VIP guests at the opening ceremony of the Winter Games in Pyeongchang. Touring around the world and performing with various ensembles, Denis Sung Ho has established himself as one of the world's best classical guitarists. Let's meet him on Heart to Heart to listen to his life story and his recent new attempts at music. Joining us on Heart to Heart today is Denise Sung Ho, a world-renowned guitarist who has been acclaimed for concerts that touch the soul. Thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Would you like to say hello to our viewers that are watching? Sure. So it's a very great pleasure to be here in the very nice program. I think you're a very nice host. I've seen you before. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and uh, so I say hi, and uh, I hope you enjoy this moment together we share. Yes, I'm looking forward to our conversation today. Once again, thanks for joining us. Pleasure. So as I introduced you to our viewers that are watching, you mm -hmm. are a world-renowned uh, classical guitarist. And uh, you also had a very special role at the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics that ended right, a couple of months right. ago. So you were the uh, artistic director for VIP guests mm -hmm. in charge of creating and directing exclusive concerts. So could you tell us about this in more detail? Of course. Actually, I've been appointed by uh, <clears throat> the IOC, International Olympic Committee. Mm -hmm. Not, I don't think I'm especially talented for that, but because I speak French and oh. they are from Switzerland. So, <laughs> and they wanted someone who can relatively behave well mm -hmm. because the, it was extremely VIP. I've seen the Ban Ki-moon and all these yes. people, so I needed to serve. So at the beginning, we created a cra crazy, totally crazy show for them. <laughs> But as time goes by, it was more and more complicated because the food also was ordered from Switzerland and everything. So we reduced at the, max, at the minimum, but at the quality. Uh -huh. It's very high quality. And because of that, it's my first time to produce a, a small, but quality was very, needed to be very high. So I had mm -hmm. a lot of pressure, but at the end, was, I think it was successful. How did you handle the stress and pressure? <laughs> I drive a lot from Seoul to, to Pyeongchang. You drove? Because sometimes they just call me to, to check the sound or whatever for, for uh -huh. some details. So I think I scream a lot in the car, mm -hmm. you know, alone, <laughs> that's how I did. <laughs> so you let off your, um, I guess, steam and all, the, all exactly. that stress in the car. Exactly. So it must have been a very uh, refreshing experience for you. Of course, um, acting as the artistic director and, of course, not a, not a guitarist at the moment. Um, and, you know, this major event was held in your home country, I mean, your homeland, Korea. So it must have had an even more special meaning to you. Uh, what was it like? Absolutely. Uh -huh. uh, I was very proud. Actually, not, uh, not proud because I was appointed artistic director, but proud of Korea, first of mm -hmm. all. I think all the... For when you're Korea, when we come back in Korea, we have this feeling to be to feel something special. You know this feeling, yes, right? Yes, yes. And um, so I was first of all very proud of Korea. I've seen the organization, mm -hmm. the entire wonderful organization, the commitment of all the sportive, the high-level people coming to Korea to celebrate it. And I thought, wow, I am in. I am. I am in. Not not for myself, but for the country. Mm -hmm. And there was, I thought, especially for my history. Uh, to serve the president mm -hmm. of, and the prime minister of Korea, Ban Ki-moon, 20, 20 VIP president and everything, I thought, wow, I represent Korea yeah. and I, I was very proud of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, just to be in Korea where the Winter Olympics was held, um, that was meaningful enough. And Absolutely. of course, for the volunteers and people actually that did help out during mm. the Winter Olympics, it was special for them. But for you, it must have been even more special, much more special because, as you mentioned, uh, it was held in Korea and um, it's not an experience uh, that comes by very easily. Absolutely not. <laughs> uh, in, uh, Pyeongchang Olympic, Olympic is one in a lifetime. Yeah. I don't think I can do it again because mm. Korea had already two Olympics, right? Mm -hmm. So I think we will not have any more. And now for our viewers that are hoping to and probably are desperate to hear you perform, <laughs> could you possibly play a piece for us here in the studio for us today? Of course, of course. Thank you. Take it away, please. <laughs>
was very soothing. I can think of so many adjectives right now, but um, could you please tell us about the piece that you just played for us? That's yes, beautiful. it's called Morning Dew. Oh. Uh, I, I composed it in Korea, mm -hmm. I think three or four years ago. I was totally jet lagged because I came from Europe and America for a concert and I landed in Korea and I'm really bad. I don't know about you, but me, I'm really bad at handling the jet, jet lag. Oh. I don't sleep. So I wake up at 3 a.m. It was a beautiful spring and I was in a mm -hmm. hotel. And I've seen the morning dew in the, the tree and, I, and this melody came in my head. Very simple. Super simple melody and I just composed it for, inspired by the, by the Korean moon in the morning. Oh wow, so you were inspired, it just happened like that. Exactly. Um, does that happen, happen very often though? I mean, when you compose? It happened three times in my life. Ah, just three times? Yes, yes. Wow. Uh, Wow, but it was, it was very, very beautiful. Um, I, could, I could sense, I don't know, a sense of sadness, but then again, not exactly sadness. Exactly. Not the sadness, sadness, but there was a sense of sadness, yet it was very soothing and calming, and I felt good listening to, mm, to it. I'm glad about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it. Could you tell us about your music in general? Because I know that you not only perform very soothing or calm music, I, I've listened to very passionate, very strong, right, right. aggressive music as well. So could you tell us about your music? I think it represents, I love the extremes. I don't like middle things. Mm. I think it's very boring. Maybe it's my Korean blood who's talking. But I love very beautiful and nostalgic things. Uh -huh. And I love passionate it. I love yeah. grand, big. So it's always very extreme mm -hmm. and indeed, it I express myself a lot of that, and I think it touched people, especially in this, this time where politically correct is coming more and more and more. We need to be so proper, so perfect. It's a very boring life. I grew up in the 70s uh, and 80s and 90s, so we can make mistakes and having extreme things, right? Uh -huh. And now it's very different. It's mm -hmm. very, very tiny. Yes. So I want to express this, this freedom in a mm -hmm. way. I, I think I can relate to what you said about you know, growing up in the 70s, because I, I also we grew are related, up in the 70s. Right? Yes, yes. I think it's the best time <laughs> for a child to have grown up. It's wonderful, yeah. right? We, we got the chance to experience a bit of this and that. I and we, we, we felt the IT transition coming. Exactly. But we still call friends. Uh -huh. uh, you know, we call and we just visit, and uh -huh. it was after 68 or mm -hmm. so. I don't say everything is good. But there was this freedom of thinking. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Now, this brings me to this question. Um, you are a Korean adoptee. Yes. And uh, just when you were <clears throat> nine months old, mm -hmm. this was when you were adopted uh, by your Belgian parents. Exactly. So could you tell us about your adoptive parents? So my Belgian parents, they are the mo most wonderful person in the world. I know some, you might know some adoptee with sad story. And mm. I know there is some activist. And I'm sorry for them, but my story, it's mm -hmm. very beautiful. So I would say I'm very lucky, mm -hmm. and there is full of love for my entire family. Not only for my parents, mm -hmm. but for my aunt, for my grandmother. I grew up in a, in a countryside in, in, in Belgium. Uh -huh. So it's really no violence, with deep value, what you say you do, what you do you say, you have commitment, mm -hmm. and you don't hurt people, you know, this kind of... Uh, beautiful value, and my parents teach me that. Mm -hmm. And I have a great respect for what they did for me, and we love each other a lot. Do you have any siblings? I don't have. Oh, so no siblings? I'm a little bit prince. <laughs> <laughs> An only child, that's what happens. Yes. You get all you? the love and affection. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I see, see you're a princess. <laughs> Not exactly, no, a princess, but, sure but I know what it means to yeah. be an only child. Mm -hmm. So you said that you were raised or you grew up in the countryside. What was it like growing up as a, as a child? What was your childhood like? It was very pure. I, yeah? There was we did bicycle in the fields. Ah. We run in the field. There is um, the farm just right after. We play with the cow in the afternoon. Uh -huh. We we build a uh, house in the in the tree. You know, very oh yes, tree houses. Very, yeah, wonderful and just like very free and it, uh -huh. of course we've been to school I've been to school mm. and everything but most of the time I, I, I did outside and playing with my friends mm -hmm. yeah I remember that too yeah. I guess I you know we all share similar childhood exactly yeah exactly. now you were first introduced to the guitar at the age of seven mm. just a little boy and you intuitively knew that music would be your life yeah at that age at seven even, even before I should say even really before. I was invited to my uh, parents' friend, mm -hmm. 
and the, the son is a talented pianist, and I hear a piano, and I, I remember I was four years old, and physically, uh -huh. I was again getting hot, oh. because I love music, <gasps> and I have this sensation always, mm -hmm. even the, in the radio, when I, I like, especially piano and guitar. So I knew guitar, it's in my, music is in my blood, and I cannot avoid that. It's mm -hmm. a real uh, gift. Did you always have music on? I and mean, did your parents always like have music on in the house or? Oh, never. You went? My parents. My father is a sport sport professor. Oh. So he teach me many sports. I'm very untalented. Mm. But we have good <laughs> relation anyway because I think we accepted the difference. Mm -hmm. My mother was a, uh, at a flower shop oh. after she stopped to take care of me. Uh -huh. So there was not so much music. But suddenly there was a guy coming in them house, adopted boy mm -hmm. who loved music, and I, I begged my father, father, please make me at, give me at the school uh -huh. for music and he accepted. Uh -huh. And right away, I should say I was talented because after four months, they put me in the second year. Mm -hmm. And after one year, they put me in the fifth year. So wow. it was kind of fast. Oh, I bet your parents are so proud of you. <laughs> I, I hope so. Yeah. At the moment, 1955 in Argentina, the tango starts dying. And when I come in, I'm taken away the tango of the people, it's a sentimental problem. The people who menaced me in those moments, today, maybe they're my friends, maybe they love me. Now, you have been very active, um, not only touring in Korea, but of course around the world. Mm -hmm. And in the most recent years, you've been exploring collaborations with you know, different genres, musical genres. Exactly. You're kind of digressing from your usual solo performances. Um, mm -hmm. What inspired you to do this, or what led you to actually do this? The, the thing, honestly, classical guitar is a beautiful instrument, mm -hmm. but the repertoire is so limited. Mm. So when you play Alan Quest Concerto, ta -da -da, ta -da -da, I play that 200 times. So at the end, I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm bored. Ah, I see. And the repertoire for classical guitar is a bit boring compared to piano program, to piano mm. thing. So I thought, I want to explore more things. Plus, I do love classical music a lot, mm. but the audience is getting old, you know? So it's kind of sad, so I thought, we need to refresh the mood. I see. I've seen um, the young pianist uh, we play with, Young Jeonil, came here recently. He also do something special. Mm -hmm. But me, I wanted to do something more collaboration. I mm. think he's more lonely guy. Me, I love to be with new, young, talented people. Mm -hmm. I love electronic music, not mm -hmm. EDM. I love to listen very loudly oh, in my I headset. Uh -huh. So I, I think collaboration is inspiring also uh -huh. for uh, with other genres. Mm -hmm. Uh, is there a particular genre that you would like to try out? Or, or maybe um, a musician or a composer you would like to collaborate with in the future? Uh, I should say, okay, it's not, it's really the truth. Uh, EXO, you know, the oh, album yeah. Universe. Oh. Universe is a great song. Mm. Great song. Not I like everything in K-pop, but this day, since one year, I think the K-pop is more sophisticated. I see, and yeah. Universe album was very nice. Uh -huh. So you'd like to try that out. Could be fantastic. Uh -huh. Yeah, it sounds like you really want to try out all different genres, exactly. kind of add a twist to it. Right, yeah? yes. But I want to keep the same mind of classical music. Mm -hmm. I mean, quality, mm -hmm. sound, and emotion. Sounds very difficult, though. Do you think it's rather easy? or? I think it's not difficult, because when you see Sting, for instance, mm. he did a collaboration with Karamazov, mm. Lutis player, 
It's very beautiful. Uh -huh. So sometimes when you meet other style like pop or electronic music, you can go down, uh -huh. one plus one is zero. But if it's very, very cleverly done, right. it can be something bigger. Right. Remember in Baroque time, mm -hmm. people, popular people and classical people, they mingle together. Mm -hmm. They made something grand. But these days there is so much barrier, That's right. which I don't like. Mm -hmm. So I try to collaborate with different styles. So I guess when it comes to this, it's not black or white. It's kind of you're going to want to make it blend and kind of exactly. meet naturally exactly. in the middle. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be easy for people to approach or, or even also, accept maybe. Also because I, I, I did a collaboration with the pop music and I took some Chopin melody. Uh -huh. Chopin melody is beautiful if you twist it with a modern sound. Mm -hmm. And I hope maybe after they can listen to Chopin uh, beautiful piano pieces. Mm -hmm. Now, you've performed on countless stages, countless stages until now, and I'd like to ask you about um, your most memorable concert or stage uh, thus far. There is two. There is um, one in, in, in Europe called Cologne Philharmonie, mm -hmm. Cologne. The acoustic is just wonderful. Mm. I mean, I've nev never seen such a great acoustic. You do that, you listen three kilometers oh. after, it, and the color, the uh -huh. is very beautiful. And of course, most memorable is America, Carnegie Hall. Mm -hmm. Because when you go to Carnegie Hall, you go to Carnegie Hall, and I wasn't in, no, nobody rented for me, so I was really in the season of Carnegie Hall, because, you know, in Carnegie, if you pay, you can go. Mm -hmm. But to me, it was in the, in the programmation of Carnegie. <clears throat> so that's not bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not bad? <laughs> yeah. We're talking about performing Carnegie Hall. Yeah. Not bad? Okay. <laughs> that's it, yeah. <laughs> Now, you're scheduled to give concerts in Korea very soon, uh, so could you tell us about the performances uh, our audiences can expect to Absolutely. enjoy? And this is the, the prolongation of what I said before about uh -huh. collaboration. So I will play a few solo pieces of classical music. Uh -huh. And after I have my own team called Coast 82. Yes. I collaborate with a young producer of London, mm -hmm. EDM. And we do a total new instrumental thing. We play Piazzolla, Sakamoto, um, but always with EDM. Mm -hmm. But not like the clubbing EDM, something more <laughs> touching EDM. Uh -huh. And uh, Chong Kyo Won, Kyo Won, also mm -hmm. the actor, will join me on stage to say one beautiful she poem. Ah. So it's more like a family gathering with something different. I see. It's, I want to do some full experience for the, for the uh, public, mm -hmm. for the audience. There is no intermission. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, it's one or 20 minutes without intermission. So it's totally new, mm -hmm. exciting, but emotional. I see. So I, I try to create something, something very new. Oh, it sounds very interesting. You've mentioned it's like a family gathering. Uh, it's emotional, yet it sounds very interesting. No intermission. Yes. Um, could you uh, tell us about the new album that will be released very soon? Sure. Yeah. So I've been lucky enough. Nexus is a huge company. They, mm -hmm. they, they distribute Dutch gramophone, Sony Classical, Universal, everything. Mm -hmm. It's a big one. It's actually number one in the world for classical music. So, and that's the first time they do a crossover collaboration, mm -hmm. electronic music slash classical music and they choose me they choose korea so we will really release the album may 30th officially and may 31st for the concert i see just the day before the one concert. day before so wow. people can purchase wow. on melon and everything on one day before great timing mm -hmm. done for that <laughs> <laughs> now since we are talking about maybe the mood of the performance or the concert um do you you usually when you tour uh, around the world or when you're touring in Korea. Uh, I heard that you recently got married. Yes. Um, like a year ago, is that right? Two years ago, mostly two years oh, ago. Oh, two years ago, congratulations. Thank you. Do you at all travel with your wife or? Not always, uh, because she has a work. I and I, I, I want her to work. Uh -huh. And she's very happy to be independent anyway. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's important her to keep, of course, when she will be pregnant, maybe she needs to quit for a while, uh -huh. but not for all life. I want her to be very free. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I travel by myself, mm -hmm. and sometimes he joins me, but mostly by myself. Can I ask how you met? 
Yes, I met her. I think her. it's going to be very romantic. Uh, it's a very romantic yes. thing. I will tell you something funny after. Uh, I wanted to, I always want to help the orphan because I want to, I get so much love, so mm. I want to pay back to Korea. So I help her orphan in a foundation mm -hmm. and she was there too for a long time. Ah. She's mentoring for a very nice per photography program. Mm -hmm. When I've seen her, I said, okay, she's the one. I will take her out of the market. Really? Because she's 12 years younger than me. She's like six centimeters taller than me. Oh. She's very clever. Uh -huh. So I thought, okay, something is happening, but that I really don't want her to be in, mm. in the circle of a single girl anymore. Uh -huh. So I took her. Really, after <laughs> one month, I, I made a proposal. <gasps> that fast? That fast. Wow. So because I, I knew she was the one, Mm. She was totally unprepared about this proposal, and I rented a restaurant and a very romantic thing. We drink a lot before, so she said yes. <laughs> <laughs> you made her say yes by making her drink a lot. A little bit. Uh, a little bit. Did she expect uh, for you to ask it all? I'm sure she had an idea. She had a thing that you. She might told me not at all, and I don't think she had an idea. Oh, really? So I took the risk. That's amazing. So I, I really didn't want her to, to be taken by someone else because she's such a fantastic lady. Uh huh. Someone will take her, I'm sure. <laughs> so I need to, to be so the yeah. first one to, to take. <laughs> wow, that's so romantic. Well, congratulations once again. She's one lucky person, and I'm sure that uh, you are very, very lucky to I'm have a lucky. wife like her. You sound like you're so happy, extremely happy. And that's what matters, I think. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, perhaps in the future we'll have a chance to see... Um, your wife of traveling course, with you course, in Korea course, as well. Of course. Now we're leading towards our final questions. I'd like to ask you what uh, the guitar means to you. Uh, uh. <laughs> guitar is um, first of all, this guitar is very special mm -hmm. because she was done. She she was made by my friend, a fam famous guitar maker, uh -huh. and he passed away a very beautiful death. By the way, he oh. was making a guitar, and after he had a heart attack. Wonderful death. So it's fine, he's, I think he's happy like that. Mm. <clears throat> but the guitar is one of the last ones he did. So the instrument is very special. You hear, you heard the sound, right? It's a very deep sound, mm -hmm. very beautiful and roundy. So for me, she's my, my best friend. I have a wife and I have my guitar. Mm -hmm. Mm. Indeed, sounds like a very, very special guitar. Very and uh, my final question would be um, what Korea means to you? What is the meaning of Korea to you? I love Korea. Uh -huh. I feel home, as I say before to some, some people on TV, cats stay with cat and, and dog stay with dog, you know. Mm -hmm. so, and me, I never felt home in Belgium, even though I had a family there. I love Korea so much. Mm -hmm. There is many good things, there is bad things, of course, because trust is difficult in this country. But it's very lively, it's very emotional. I love, I love to be here, mm -hmm. definitely. Okay. I'd like to thank you once again for sparing your time, for giving us the opportunity to learn more about you and your music, and for sharing your personal stories with us as well. My pleasure. Um, and thank you for performing for us here in the studio. <laughs> that was really, really beautiful. Um, we hope that we will get more opportunities to see you perform all across Korea more often, and Between. of course around the globe. Thank you so much thank for you, being with us. Thank, thank you. you.